Making your own Star Wars film doesn't have to be all that difficult, nor expensive. Obviously you'll need things like a camera and a Wi-Fi connection and a computer, but hey, maybe you're using your neighbor's Wi-Fi and you stole a computer from your local library. That's what I did anyway. Hi, I'm James Kenworthy and this is episode 1 of a series where I'm going to be making my own Star Wars movie trailer on a really low budget and it's going to be super cool. Let's get to it. So, this first scene is from that part of any movie when the main character is contemplating their choices and is about to make a big decision which sets them up for their turning point in the story. I just filmed myself on a green screen in a room and it was lit simply by the sunlight from the window. I keyed out the green and brought myself into Blender by adding a camera and roughly aligning it to my scene the same way I had filmed in the real world. The image was set as the background, but brought to the front. Then I'm just going to add a landscape, mess around with some settings, and make it big. Using the True Terrain add-on, I will texture the landscape, giving it some muddy and rocky textures. Next up, I'm adding this big cube, and in the shading tab, I'm adding a principled volume shader to create fog. You can just mess around with the density and the emission strength to get a nice look. Here are my values. To light the scene, I've just got a sunlight which is angled to match the same lighting as the live action. And it's got a really low value. Now, I want to add a bunch of trees in the background. You could just use a picture of some trees, but I'm going to use the Alpha Trees add-on. To have the trees only appear at the back, I will select the landscape and move into weight painting. Then with a high density, I'll paint over the area of the landscape that I want to be covered with trees. Then in the distribution settings in Alpha Trees, I will select my weight painting group. Then in compositing, I have to bring it all together with some curves, some lens blur, and some ash stock footage. I got that from productioncrate.com. This second scene takes place in yet another foggy field, so all the same principles apply. Here are the volume shader values. Let's talk about the character animation. First up, I gotta get both the clone and battle droid 3D models. I got them for free from Sketchfab. I chucked them into Mixamo and got some animations. For the first shot, I got this animation for the droid and this one for the clone. Then for the second shot, I grabbed some running animations and a falling back one. Now, the creature that slaps the clone is called a Nidak, and it's from Jedi Fallen Order on Dathomir. I got this model from a guy on YouTube who has extracted a bunch of the models from the game. The link to that video is below. And is any of this actually legal? This first shot was actually really easy. I brought the droid and the clone into the scene. I gave the droid its blaster. To attach it to its hand, I will select the armature and go into pose mode. I'll hit one of the bones near its hand, then go back into object mode. Then simply select the blaster, then the armature. Control P and parent the blaster to the bone. Let's animate some cameras. I'm going to make both the cameras be an over shoulder of the characters. Then simply animate the cameras to track with them. For the droid angle, I'll even rotate it towards the clone, and then have it pan back to the droid when the clone is shot. In the animation tab, I'm going to add noise modifiers to each axis of rotation to give some variation and organic movement. The laser was also simple, just stretching out a cylinder, giving it a red emission material, putting it at the tip of the gun, then animating it over to the clone over a few frames. I then chucked in a spark burst for when the laser hit. That spark burst was from productioncrate.com. For the Nidak shot, I did everything the same, except when I brought in the clone running animation, I also added an empty, to which I parented all of the armatures to the empty. Then I used that empty to make the clones run forward. Also, to have the clone animation loop, I will change over to the graph editor, then change the channel extrapolation mode to cyclic. Then it comes to the Nidak. I simply brought it in and lined it up to smack this front clone. To have him fall backwards, I brought in this next animation. I copied the keyframes from that armature and pasted them onto the clone. And as you can see, it literally snaps from one animation to the other. Now there is a way to actually blend them together, but I'm not going to do that because you can't really tell in the final shot. Well, maybe you can, but whatever. Okay, and for the final touches, I have this dirt explosion from Action VFX. I used the Images as Planes add-on to bring it into my scene and have it start at the frame from when the Nidak lands. And that's really about it. All the camera animation is very similar as it was to the last scene. I just added a lot more noise modifiers to make it very shaky. 
Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for episode two, where I'm going to talk about creating big armies. And also subscribe, because if you subscribe, you automatically enter a prize pool to win anywhere from zero to $500,000. Yeah. <laughs>